I never had a conversation with my father about my sexuality. So the first time he said he knew was when he got a wedding invitation. What's good, good people? I'm OBO, and in case you didn't know, I'm the G in LGBTQ, and you're watching It's Just Not Adding Up. So get in here and act like you got some sense. We're about to create some space. <laughs> I want to break the experience down in a way that is more than digestible because I think oftentimes when we're having these conversations, it seems like men get married, it's legal now, go do it, you know, under the guise of what? What is this called? We haven't had a lot of people like slow walk us in this mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. We've had to navigate so much of that for ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? And so what does it look like for me to have someone tell me, and even if I don't take your advice, I not have somewhat of a filter. But a lot of us weren't even able to get that filter going because we had literally nothing to go off of. And so for you, I know you got married 12 years ago, which is still crazy to me. Honestly, it was very organic. Um, mm. That's something I've always wanted to. I always wanted to be a father. I always wanted to be a husband. I knew that since I was young. So, um, you know, in the discovery of like how that would come about, I just didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine telling my family and telling people and like that you were getting married that you were queer both both you know what I'm saying because okay. like with, with my dad it happened at the same time um you know what do you mean go stop no, uh, don't go past that okay try to run past. what yeah. do you mean same time I never had a conversation with my father about my sexuality so the first time he said he knew was when he got a wedding invitation and so he called me and he was just like so like what is this mm. like uh are you sure you want to do this why don't you wait and i just pa i said pause i'm gonna stop you there my parents raised me to be a person who cares for my family who stands up for what i believe in this is my family so you have a choice you can be a part of the story mm. or you cannot mm. you can call me and just talk surface level stuff or you can call me and be a part of my life those are your choices but that's where I stand. I was blessed to have an advocate. And my mom, I, she, talk, she talked about him about how like people commit suicide because their families don't accept him. Yeah. Is that what you want for your child? Like think past what your direct audience is gonna say, what your family is gonna say, what your church is gonna say, and think about this is your baby. It's time to get married. What does that look like? What does that look like? It looked like how what we wanted to look like. Honestly, we didn't follow any guidelines. It was kind of traditional, like we jumped the broom uh, because it was illegal at that time. So thinking about when slave, uh, enslaved people used to get married and jump the broom because it wasn't legal. So that was rep uh, representative of our ancestors who went through the same struggle that we were facing. I remember that. Um, but we chose our colors. We uh, got married on a Monday, which was uh, unheard of really, because we wanted 11-11, the date. Uh, okay. We were just numeric. His birthday was nine, is 9-10, and mine is 12-13, uh, so 11-11. Okay, I get matches it. Matches us. Whatever. So, so we chose these things based solely on like our experience. And that's what I urge people to do, is think about you and your partner. Like, what is going to make y'all happy? What is going to create a moment in time that you'll cherish forever? When we walked down the aisle, my mom and dad walked with me. Okay. And then his mom walked with him. Okay. Um, which that was, like, background about our families. So both of our grandfathers are bishops in, yeah, the black church. So you already know what that looks like. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, when, when it came to inviting people, mm. uh, we invited everybody and who showed up, showed up and who didn't, didn't and they weren't supposed to be there. Did you get married in church? No, we got married at an event space. Okay. Um, we just, at that time, it was just like, <sighs> I, I, I say that because it was a bit of trauma in it. Mm. Um, like calling about something that you're really excited about and then to be met with negativity uh like one officiant was like why would you do that it's not legal why would you even want to do that why would you you know like having this whole conversation this where i have to defend like a happy moment in my life to mm -hmm. someone who doesn't even know me and i was like you know what i'm good so what we did is uh, my godfather actually uh was the officiant he went ahead and got his license so he could officiate the wedding yeah. just to have it with in love like i want somebody who's going to be supportive i don't want somebody that just there for a check i feel that 
Oh, I feel that. Again, we're gonna break this whole thing down. So, <laughs> who walked first, and how'd you guys decide who walked out first? I walked out first. Um, was there any symbolism in that? Or it was just ra random selection. What? Um, it's just what what we wanted. Okay. I mean, so <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it, I got it's, you. It, and it's like I we try to stay away from gender roles. Okay. Because we're both men. Okay. And it's like um, it's not saying that you can't be a bride, or whatever, whatever you yeah want to be, but for us. It was like we're both grooms, so, so that's how we're gonna do it. And um, I was first, so I received him. Um, at the oh, time. got you. You up first, you received him, got it. And what was the song? Um, uh, uh, was it Mo Monica? Um, Come on, Monica. Uh, Wait a minute I can't now. I can't. Wait no, a minute because now. It's, it's these two Wait songs. a minute now. Wait, I don't think this part gonna make it. Love video. all over me. Is is oh uh, I've got love uh -huh. all over me. Doom, mm -hmm. doom. So our wedding parties weren't um, a part of the community. Like our sisters, you know, are straight or whatever. But they were in. So like we, it was like if females were with females and males were with males. Did you have groomsmen? Mm -hmm. How many did you guys have? It was like twelve. A piece. Total, no total. Oh, like we had like six same. each. Y'all yeah, got some friends. Yeah, total no, piece. Got sure. it. And it was guys and girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And so when it comes time to get engaged, how did you navigate that? Um, we talked. I knew we both wanted to be married. Um, and we both wanted a family. Yeah. Um, at that time, and so it was like, I just was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. So I. I had my parents' uh, wedding rings because my parents are divorced, so I had both my mother and my father's rings. So I proposed with my mom's like mm. wedding ring as a, a representation of like this is my promise to you, you know. Um, so I love that. It just was a moment. It wasn't like staged. It mm -hmm. wasn't a group of people. It was literally just the two of us. Come on now. In the house. In, in the bathroom and like I was planning and I was planning how I was gonna do it in my head and like we literally got, got into an argument in the car on the way home <laughs> and so I was just like I'm just gonna do it anyway while I have the courage yeah because at this time I was really scared because I hadn't really been open publicly about, about myself okay. at, at that yeah. time like yeah. 2009 2010 that was like a long time ago and I was in a very different space. For sure. Okay. The world was in a different space. For sure. You know, um, and I was just, I just asked him. Everything fell into place. We flew to DC the next day to actually do the legal part because we couldn't do it here in Georgia. So. Uh, oh yeah. We're talking 2000. Uh, 2013. 2013. So we had to go to a different state to actually get married, which it was like awkward. <laughs> That's what <laughs> the world is tiring. You know the world is like, the world drains me. What about the people who don't have access mm -hmm. to do this? For sure, but still have the love and want to be married. Like, how is that fair? It's not. You know what I'm, I'm saying? saying? Million dollar question. You guys tell me. Yeah. We like so that that kind of is why we put posted the wedding online and kind of were very public about it. It's just because we thought it needed to change. Like things needed to change. Funny story. So when I was in I was in college, uh, when I saw the video, um, I'm a little bit younger, not that much younger, but just a little bit younger. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in college when I saw it. And fast forward to me going to the gym one day and I see him. And um I didn't even see your partner at the time. I just saw you and I was like <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw you get married. Like, I wasn't like in the house, but I'm pretty sure I saw you get married. I looked to my like right or something, and his partner's like right there, and I'm like, I y'all still what? Like y'all, I saw it, and it was such a moment for me because again, it was inspiring because I had never seen two men get married. I had never seen it before in my life, and so it was just really interesting for me to like witness two men get married, be public about it, be out loud and proud. You know, and I think a lot of times when we're talking about these fantasies, they feel like fantasies. But that day, oh, this sounds so sweet coming out of my mouth. But like that day, it felt like a reality. Oh, oh my you. God, that, it, wasn't supposed to be, it wasn't supposed to be that point. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't, I really wasn't trying to make that that. So what advice would you give to someone who is, who wants to get married, wants to be a father, just wants to like, you know, embark on all of those things? What would you say? I would say, follow your heart, do it. 
the how you want to do it, do how you and your partner want to do it. I think um, like heteronormative uh, templates are toxic because it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't work for heterosexual people. The divorce rate is like 55%. In heterosexual marriages yeah. so you know so it's not working for them so why feel like we have to superimpose it on ourselves like find out what works for you and your partner as individuals and be brave it's hard uh but it's worth it it's hard but it's worth it think about people like you like i when we set out to get married and do everything we never thought that we would affect somebody's life like you you know what I mean? So, so sitting here for me, that is inspiring and touching to like live your truth, be bold, be brave, and not be afraid because you don't realize how many lives you might be changing with yeah. just showing up. You know what I mean? If you want to preach, just say, "This okay. get you some water, get us some ice, ice water, get us some ice, some ice water." I love that. I think I haven't gotten married yet. You know what I'm saying? One day, but but I think. The only advice I can give to anybody who has a goal is to chase it. Don't don't let anybody. And I think also too, like get people out of the way. I think a lot of times in our life, most of what's hindering us is not the lack of capability as much as this. We need to move bad things, and I'm using bad things loosely, out of the way. A lot of times we're having we have bad information, we have misinformation, we have people that have expired in our lives, and they're just in the way. And so it's, mm -hmm. I think it's suppressing our desires. I know even for myself, I went through, you know, a restructuring of my community in a lot of ways because I needed people who could affirm me, who could love me, who could like truly see me and not like see me and, and cringe, but see me and still be able to pass that love towards me. Mm -hmm. And so I think for anybody who has a goal, whether it's to be more alive in your truth, whether it's to get married, whether it's whatever, hold on to that goal and see who needs to kind of get up out of the way if we're being frank. And sometimes there's people who you once really, really cherished and that's okay. Cause that was me in a lot of ways. I was like, man, God, this person, you sure? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. yeah. That's a word. <laughs> now yeah. that's a word right there. I do just want to say that I don't, if getting married is not something you really want and you're just, uh, doing it because you think that's what you should aspire to, mm. don't. Because that, it, that will cause harm. Agreed. I think that plays into the heteronormative model, right? Like, mm -hmm. if it doesn't fit, that's fine. I think a lot of us think because we are living in this world where in the heterosexual space, you know, you have you get married, you have a kid, you you know, so we think we have to follow that same trajectory. But to your point, if that trajectory does not work for you, it doesn't work for you. And that is okay. It is. It, 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 I mean, there's no, it it, it, like, I mean, cause I don't want people to think like, cause we're talking about marriage. Like there's like, you're more valuable because you're married. You're not. Mm. And, and that causes problems with married friends and single friends and single people and married people that I've seen where it's like this resentment of yeah. like, you have this thing that you're not even worthy of it. You, you know, like that whole, that's a, that's a thing. So we got to be careful of how we talk about it and let people know, like, you are enough. Period. Period. Keep creating space. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>